Hello, my friends, and welcome back to my channel. It is Wednesday, which means it is time for my weekly weigh-in and the meeting topic. We'll get right started with the weigh-in because I'm waiting for my iPad to charge up a little bit so I can get you the weekly topic. Oh, there it goes. So, honestly, wasn't sure what to expect. Had a great beginning of the week. Not so great to the end of the week. Um, when the boys come home, it's a little harder. Um, we had poker night and just a lot of stuff going on. And I indulged probably a little bit more than I should have. But I still was within my points. I just ate the food that... Not all points are created equal. Let's just say that. Um... You know, if you eat, I don't know, I'm trying to think, 10 points worth of good, whole, healthy food versus 10 points worth of a donut, you're not getting the same nutritional value. And it's not sitting in your body the same way. And I had some foods that were not great nutritional value picks this weekend. Did I stay within my points? I did, but with that said, I lost 0.4 this week. So I really feel like that was a gift. Um, like I said, not a whole lot of nutritionally dense food over the weekend. Didn't do horrible, but could have done better. Now that Lent is upon us, you know, like so many other uh, WW YouTubers have talked about, we all seem to do well during Lent. I know I do. Why can't I keep that exact same mentality throughout the year? I'm not sure. But during Lent, it's just in the forefront of my mind. I mean, you know, we are very faithful religious people. So I kind of use that as a, like I stop and think like, Today is a day of fasting for us. Will I get hungry? Yes. Will I get cranky? Yes. Will I get a headache? Yes. But I keep thinking to myself, because this is what works for me because of my religious nature. I'm thinking Jesus was pretty uncomfortable on that cross. I'm thinking he was in some pain. If I'm sacrificing for religious reasons, then I need to suck it up just like he did. Like I said, it works for me because of my background. And that's kind of what I lean on and that's kind of what I use during Lent. Like when I, you know, say I'm not going to eat certain things, I'm gonna cut back on certain things. And I, I lean on that. I say, look, you know, I've got a good example here. So it works for me. Why I can't keep that up all year, I don't know. But I'm going to run with it now. So I'm expecting a really, really good next couple weeks. Um, I plan on it. That, that's all there is to it. I'm not hoping for it. I'm not wishing for it. I'm planning on it. It's in the forefront of my mind. So that's that. So lost point for happy with that. Chipping away, chipping away, chipping away. Better than a gain, right? That's how I look at it. I'm at the point in my life where I'm not gonna be dropping two and three pounds a week. So when I don't have that much to lose, you don't lose that kind of weight. So that's all I have to say about that. Let's get right to the meeting topic. Kind of fits in with all that. How to stop self-sabotage. We all do it. We all do it. I do it. You do it. We all do it. If we don't do it, we're lying. Let's cut to the chase. Sometimes things just don't go the way you want them to. Does that stink? Sure. Is there a way to make changes and course correct for the next time? You bet. Face it. We all have disappointments. 
we could have the most perfect WW week ever. We got in our exercise, we got in our water, we got in our veggies, we stayed within our points, and we gained a pound. It's happened to all of us, it's happened. You just have to remember that the scale is a snapshot in time. You can get on that scale at seven o'clock in the morning and it says one thing, you can get on that scale at 7.30 and it says something else. Our weight fluctuates day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute. It's a snapshot in time. We cannot let that cause us to self-sabotage. It says, try this. Imagine there's a recording of that situation you were in that you didn't love. Rewind it in your mind. Make note of what you're doing, what's going on around you, and even what you're thinking. Spot any moments that might have contributed to your challenge. The ones where you wish you could stop the tape and change what you did or how you acted. So that's, for an example, let's say, let's say you're at a party. You have exactly planned out what you're gonna do, what you're gonna eat. No, we're not gonna use a party, we're gonna use your house. You have exactly what you're gonna plan to eat for the day and it's, it's perfectly there. You have your plan, you know, you already had your breakfast and you were having a higher point breakfast that morning because you were having a lower point dinner that afternoon. So you used eight points on breakfast and it was wonderful. And then you used two points on lunch because you weren't really that hungry. So 10 points, you get 19 points a day. You have a 17 point dinner planned and a two point snack and Doug needs me, hold on a second. I hope I don't lose my train of thought. Sorry about that, he had to grind his coffee beans and did not want to interrupt us. So you have your whole day planned out perfectly, perfectly for your points. And then all of a sudden your significant other says, hey, let's go out to dinner. Okay, you have two choices. You can go somewhere where you can eat dinner out for 10 points or nine points or seven points, whatever it is you have left for the day. Or you can have a chat and say, look, hon, I had my day planned out and it's really not in my plan to go out to dinner. Do you think we could go out to dinner tomorrow night instead where I can plan my day a little bit better and maybe have a one or two point breakfast and a zero point lunch and then we'll be able to go to that restaurant that you wanna to go to because it's a little bit higher point. So imagine your situation, spot any moments that you could have changed. So you pause and you, you think about that. Um, okay, so maybe it wasn't a go out to dinner. Maybe it was coming home from work, your husband or wife or spouse or, or partner or brother or sister or child stops at a bakery and brings you your favorite donut. Same situation. What do you do? You pause and you think about it. You need to make a plan. Don't just react. Don't just shove that donut in your mouth. Maybe if you don't have the points left, you save it for tomorrow when you have the points. Maybe if you only have a few points left, you can cut it in half things like that. You need to stop and think about the moments that contributed to the challenge. The next thing they tell you to do is pick one thing to tweak and re-record. What do you shift? We kind of talked about that. What do you do? You you make better choices. Better choices are not always the easiest. They're not. I know if Doug said, Doug is not a huge out to eat kind of guy. So, you know, I can't tell you the last time he said to me, hey, let's go out to eat. I'm usually the one because I'm the one that needs a break. He never suggests. <laughs> um, so if he did suggest it, it would probably be a little harder for me to be like, oh, not a good night. But I also know that he understands. 
he understands. And he would understand if I said, hey, not a good night, could we do it tomorrow night? Or, you know, oh, I know you wanna to go to XYZ, but could we go here instead? Cause I know I can get a really nice piece of salmon. Something like that. So think about what you could tweak. Then the next step, number four is press play on your new video. Did your outcome ultimately change? Pinpoint what led to your success so you can repeat it. A lot of times, my friends, what leads to our success is just stopping and reevaluating, deciding what we want more. What do you want more? Do you want that decadent cupcake? Do you want that decadent meal? Or do you want to lose weight? Do you want to take your health back? Do you want to reach your goals? What do you want more? Let me tell you, being on a weight loss journey is hard. Being overweight is hard. You have to choose your heart. And I'm not saying never eat out. I'm not saying never have that decadent cupcake. I am not saying never have that 30 point restaurant dinner. I'm not saying that because that's not real life. You know, I'm all about real life. I just proved it a few minutes ago when we had to grind coffee beans. You just can't do it all the time. You have to fit it in. You have to work around it. And sometimes we have to make the hard choices. We have to hit play. We have to, you know, it's, it's not easy, but it's worth it. My friends, it's worth it. Plan for those times. On the other times, watch that tape of yourself and see what you're doing and hit rewind and hit pause and refilm it. Let's dive a little deeper. Why do I always sabotage myself? If you've ever blamed yourself for not feeling motivated enough, the rewind the tape technique is for you. Let's say you accidentally bought a lunch that blew through your daily budget. You're annoyed, you're mad at yourself, you're defeated. First, try showing yourself some kindness. Things happen and you can always get back on track. Okay, you know I'm all about the giving yourself a little bit of grace. A little bit of grace. An inch of grace. Not a foot, not a yard. Sometimes we're too nice to ourselves and we give ourselves too much grace. Yes, we can always start over. We can start over every single day of our life. But... If we start over every single day of our life, we're running on the hamster wheel. We are not getting anywhere. So yes, the theory is there that we can start over every day. And you know what? Sometimes we have to, but eventually you have to keep going and not start over. You have to keep going or you're just going to stay where you're at. So a little bit of grace, a little bit. Looking at the mental picture of how you got here might show that you didn't make enough food for dinner to have leftovers. Or maybe you forgot to pack your personal points friendly lunch that was sitting in your fridge. With that in mind, mentally add a note next to your keys so you don't forget. Looking back can help you connect the dots to see what factors were at play and notice any patterns in your actions, your thoughts, or your feelings. You're then equipped with the right tools to figure out what to do next. It can also help remove self-criticism and blame you and blame from your vocab. And you'll identify and make small changes to build momentum and move forward. Sometimes I don't think we should, and I know this is opposite of what Weight Watcher says, and you know I'm all about the tough love because it's what I need. Everybody needs something different. If I coddle myself, I'm never changing. I need to give myself some tough love. So yes, should we remove some self-criticism and blame? We absolutely should. But we should leave some there too, because guess what? Sometimes we are to blame. 
Sometimes we just make a crappy choice and we do it intentionally. We do, we do. And that's what needs to stop. Not the oops moments where you forgot your lunch. But even if you forget your lunch, I'm, I'm sorry, you can get a salad somewhere or you can get a low point lunch. That doesn't necessarily give you a ticket to binge. But sometimes we do it intentionally and we do have to blame ourselves. Sometimes we just say, screw it, I'm doing it. And you know what, and sometimes that's okay. Sometimes that's okay. I said that last night to a piece of king cake. Mm -hmm. I did, I did. It was Mardi Gras, it was Fat Tuesday. I had some weekly points to use. So that's what I said, screw it. I'm having a piece of king cake. Yeah, I have it once a year and I had a piece. But I kind of planned for it, my friends. I did. I had the weeklies. I knew I was going to do it. I didn't have a piece for breakfast, for lunch, and for dinner. Nope. I saved it for the treat when all of us were finally home last night. The boys went to a, a hockey game. Doug was at class. I planned for it and I did it. So there's no blame in that. If I ate it all day, there would have been some blame in that. So you have to look at the big picture, but you also have to look at the fine details. I hope that makes sense. Sometimes we just say screw it and that's okay. Sometimes we just say screw it and we say it's screw all too often and it's not okay. It's not okay. You need to make the hard choices if you want to succeed. Got a little off topic there, didn't I? I always do, but I really needed to hear this because with Lent coming up, I need to make the hard choices. I've already made the hard choices. Now I need to follow through with them. Yep, and guess what? I'm gonna do it. I know I am because I'm in that mindset. I am. I can't wait to step on. I'm excited to step on the scale next week because I know it's gonna be wonderful. And I know it's gonna give me the lift I need. I know I'm gonna see a good loss. And when I see that good loss, I'm not gonna say, oh, you know what? I lost two pounds this week. I'm gonna have a big treat today. It's way in day. I'm gonna have a big treat. Nope. I'm gonna say I lost that two pounds or whatever it is, friends, because I stuck to the plan because I did what I needed to do and I'm going to continue to do it. I think this was my therapy session today, friends. I hope you got something out of it because I certainly did. <laughs> so that is it. That is the weekly topic. Think about it. Think about how you've done things and how you can rewind and do them differently. Not all the time, but when we need to. So this week's menu is, or recipe is not something I'll be making. Tuscan sausage and bean stew. Yeah, look at those beans in there, friends. You know I'm not eating those. <laughs> so there you have it. Lost point four, weekly topic. I'm on fire, I know I am, yep. Lent has lit a fire under me. So come along for the ride. Thank you so much for spending a little bit of time with me today. You have no idea how much I appreciate the busy time. I know we're all busy. You take the time out of your busy day to spend it with me. So have a wonderful, wonderful Wednesday and I'll see you in my next video.